Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app. Use the code Bear Bets. That's Bear Bets for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. Another NFL week ahead of us. Myself, Jeff Schwartz, again, as always on Thursdays. We are joined by Will Hill and John Murray from the Superbook to kick around in the gambling group chat. Everything that's going on in the National Football League. But before we get to them, I figure you and I can kind of do a little uh, examination of the trade deadline and w- which teams uh, clearly improve themselves, which teams uh, may still be worth a bet. May, w- some of the line moves that we've seen, uh, are, are these trades really actionable or not? And, and I guess, Jeff, you just got to start at the top with Zadarius Smith going from the Browns to the Lions. Yeah. And I guess my my question here is, Yes, the Lions needed someone. Um, and again, I, I'm just throwing this out there just to play devil's advocate. And I think a lot of people are rightfully so making a big deal of this, of this trade. Are we a little bit concerned that Zadarius Smith with Miles Garrett on the opposite side is going to be a heck of a lot different than now without Miles Garrett on the other side now in Detroit? Well, it's certainly possible, but and I'm not sure there's an exact point number you give to having a defensive end on your team that can rush the passer. But the fact is you can isolate pass rushers now much easier on the offensive linemen because of the scheme defenses use. So I'm not as worried about that bear, Um, but just having that presence, right? Like let's say teams have to worry about Smith. Well, then let's your other pass rushers run a little freer, right? So I'm not sure it changes how I feel about the lions, but it does give me a little more like, okay, well now in third downs, you have a better pass rusher. And it makes me feel better about their chances to play defense against the elite NFC teams in you know come postseason time. Um, and it was a trade they had to they had to fill that spot because yep. there's there was no you're not doing a one for one replacement, but just something where teams have to worry about a pass rusher when they play the the, uh, the line. So yes, I, I don't know if he's going to be as good without Miles Garrett, but I think they can find ways to get him one on ones. And that was my favorite deal on 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 on, um, on the, the the trade deadline day. I like I liked other trades that I think are more imp- impactful to happen before that, but on on the trade deadline that was my favorite one. Clear favorite now to win the NFC. I think so. I, I we talked about this for weeks now. I feel like the, the Lions. Um, that was an impressive win in Green Bay. I mean, we, we talk about can they play outside? Can they play in the weather? Well, it was wet and cold, and they pushed around the Packers. Um, and their formula, man. Look, when you run the football. When you're physical in the trenches, when you have an accurate quarterback that avoids mistakes, when you have the weapons they have on the outside, and Jameis uh, and Williams comes back the week, I believe, off, off suspension, like they're getting better. They're pretty healthy outside of Hutchinson, and they just won a big road game when we sort of mocked them for not playing any road games outside yet, Bear. So, yeah, the Lions to me are the clear favorite. I mean, they're going to get the NFC Championship game most likely at Ford Field. I mean, it's a different game playing the Niners at home than it is playing the Niners away. And look at the rest of the NFC. I mean, who else right now are you like, clamoring to wager on to win the NFC. No, the, Eagle, the Eagles, not really. They're playing better. The Niners with injuries, you're not right now. Um, the Vikings have sort of fallen back a little bit, which we expected. The Packers, so, we just saw them go to yes. Bay and handle and win. So the Lions, to me, are the clear favorite in the NFC. The other two ones I, I liked, we talked about these. I mean, Amari Cooper, who didn't play last week, but his impact. And then Hopkins on the Chiefs. Yeah. Like, those three are sort Hopkins of the— Hopkins is completely yes. different. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the throw Mahomes made over the middle of field oh. late in that game, no one else catches that in the Chiefs since Tyreek Hill. Even Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill, for as good as he is, is not a jump ball catcher. Right. He's not a big guy. Get yeah. Space and, and so Hopkins, that was a great catch, and it changes their offense so much. So Amari Cooper, Hopkins, Smith to me. Uh, and then, look, Marshawn Lattimore is— Interesting one in Washington because this feels like a move for the future bear more than the immediacy. 
right? Like just having a lockdown corner changes what you can do defensively. And he's locked into a deal. So he'd be there for a couple of years. They have a ton of draft picks. So they didn't give up a lot to get rid of him. And that feels like a, a long-term investment, a lockdown corner, which, you know, every team needs a lockdown corner, especially if you're a defensive coach like Dan Quinn. Oh, oh the last one I just remembered. Training a fourth round pick for Jonathan Mingo, home run. Oh, for yeah, the yes, yeah, absolutely. They must they must love Jonathan Mingo. Home run for the they Cowboys. Must want him in that on yeah. that roster coming up yeah. for future years. Ceiling for the commanders, a division title and a I, playoff I, win. I, I think division title is certainly a possibility. Uh they're really good, Bear. And defensively, they're they're not as good, uh, really good offensively, but they do enough defensively. They have a good defensive coach. Yeah, they're not winning the NFC. They're, you know, the Lions, I think, would beat them in the playoffs. Are they winning the NFC East? Um, I don't know. If, if Eagles commanders played right now, who would you pick to just win the game straight up? I would pick the part of the commanders. Hmm. Just right now, straight up, a neutral site, whatever it was. What's surprising the Eagles won, but I like I like Washington's coaching more like Nick Sirianni. Yeah, and I, I will say this though: since a couple of weeks ago, when I when I liked the Giants in that game uh, against the Eagles, the Eagles have actually played uh, pretty well. Better, yes. Uh, the, the last couple of weeks, and may, maybe Sirianni's kind of staying out of the way a little bit. And I mean, well, I shouldn't say that because he made some questionable decisions on on Sunday in that game against Jacksonville, where they almost. Mm-hmm. Where they almost lost. So uh I don't know. I'm I might I might say the Eagles. I still think talent wise they're better than Washington, even though even though Daniels is really, really good. Best bet though you can probably make right now, I I, I would be Lions to win the NFC. If you could play like one future right now that's like a like a realistic type price, like Lions to win the NFC would probably be that bet. Yes. I think so. There we go. There you have it. I'm gonna have to add a little more, a little more line. I, I like I like my golf to win the MVP, even though it's not wasn't the best number to get, but plus nine hundred because they're the ones. He's got a great chance, man. He does, but I still think you got you're gonna have those guys in the uh, in the AFC. I agree. Deal with yeah. as well, but uh, yeah. I, I'm going to have to add a little bit more Lions NFC to the uh, to the account. Maybe the number is not great right now, but if they are the one seed and host that NFC Championship game at Four Field, we will see. And we're going to talk about some other potential uh, futures bets to make. Is it maybe a time to to buy on the Niners as well and run over the entire slate right now uh, of the uh, of the uh, National Football League this week with Will and John in the Gambling Group Chat. Time again, Gambling Group Chat, NFL style. Myself, Jeff, joined by. Will Hill and John Murray, and I know I know Will and John. Before we uh, talk about the Thursday night game between the the Ravens and the Bengals, uh, thoughts on the NBA Finals preview from last night in uh, in LA between the Sixers and Clippers. Boy, that was a curveball. I was wasn't expecting a you know a, a Clippers. Paul George, Harden, both revenge game lead in here on the uh, on the Bear Bets pod. But yeah, those are ones I know you and I both have the under, so we're rooting for them both to lose. But those uh, look to be in uh, in pretty good shape. I, I know you were up late watching it, though. So hopefully you're not too tired here doing this yeah, podcast. Yeah, uh, no, knowing that I was able to doze off in the car right down here this morning made me made it a lot easier. We, we, our, six, our Sixers, I think now, what, one and six? One and six. Hate to see it, don't you? And the, Paul George was upset that Clipper fans booed him last night. I did not know Clippers had fans. So that was the surprising that's, that's part of that. Also, a, yeah, I was also very surprised that that that, that it happened. But look, I guess into a domes. I gotta go. It's nice. It looks nice. The the the, the new building for the Clippers. Yeah, so I saw. I remember when I went to SoFi a couple of years ago. It's right there. Yeah, it was, it was, it was being built. And it looked it looked great. But anyway, on to other more pressing matters. Uh, Thursday night, good game. Ravens hosting the Bengals. Uh, Ravens are a six-point favorite, total of around 53. Uh, John, I'll just start with you on the game. Are, are, are we seeing some Bengals money here just because of the first game going overtime in a game that Cincinnati easily could have won? Yeah, I think people are going to bet the Bengals here, Bear, because the, you know, the Bengals always seem to play up to their competition and play down to their competition as well. You know, the Bengals could have easily beat Baltimore – they could have easily beat Kansas City at Arrowhead. I think that was in week two. So there, there definitely is some money on the Bengals here. There's going to be a lot of money line parlays starting with Baltimore, though. So they'll be good, good two-way action on this. Really a pretty good Thursday night game, which is nice to see. I think, we get a, I think we get a streak of good Thursday night games. I think Commanders-Eagles is next Thursday. Good one. So yeah. we're getting some pretty good Thursday games here. I think we're going to have good action on this one tonight. 
I think we probably just don't want to see Baltimore win by a field goal, you know, because that'll just right. keep all those money line parlays going to the weekend. Well, I mean, the the good week, the good stretch of Thursday game started last week with the Jets and the and the Texans. I mean, that was oh, of course. I, I you know what? I'm sorry, I forgot about that. And I and also I got to say, Will, I appreciate you uh, you know falling on the sword of that NBA question because <laughs> if, if you guys think I know who won the Sixers Clippers game last night, uh, <laughs> you are you are mistaken, my friends. I was yeah. long asleep before that game ended. Yeah, I, I I learned they played last night when. <laughs> I I was just clicking on the front page of the of the of the, the, the online and I saw that I saw and I saw that uh, Ryan Cockburn who had no idea that he still was playing college basketball had like forty nine points and whatever some ridiculous game for Creighton so yeah that, that was the uh, that was the extent of my knowledge and yeah you you, you could tell okay. me you could tell me who made John Starks had fifty points last night for the Knicks and I'd say okay and that's kind of <laughs> kind of kind of where I am well. I'll watch the NBA when they get to the postseason, Bear, but I can't. I mean, you got to call some things out of your life. The <laughs> NBA regular season, Correct. where the guys don't even bother playing half the time. I I don't have to. I can't. Check out. I, I just can't do it. Yeah, I mean, look. As far as this game tonight, John brings up an interesting point because, man, these money line parlays with the favorites, and I'm sure John knows very well. Boy, unless you had the uh, not to bring up a sore subject, unless you had the Saints last week, Thanks, those Will. money line parlays Appreciate you. got home Appreciate because Thanks, nobody. Buddy. I mean, yeah. these these favorites couldn't win a game the first month of the season. It was dog after dog after dog. Now it's all favorites. I don't know that man. We talk about trends and you know, you bet the dogs they're winning, bet the favorites they're winning. This stuff all kind of evens out. I, I think that's a dangerous way to handicap these games. With that being said, I agree with what John said. You get Burrow plus points. That's usually a good way to go. Lamar usually not good, you know, covering these big spreads. And, and like you said, uh, Bear, since he was up 10, like middle of the fourth quarter and somehow let that game get away uh, a month or so ago, it, it would be leaning towards the Bengals. I'm curious if we get a seven. I'm seeing six, six and a half. Even if it's like a seven minus 120, minus 125, that would be an automatic take on the Bengals. Not sure we're going to get there. Maybe some of these books that let you buy cheap half points onto key numbers and you lay a little extra juice to get the protection of the seven. Because I could easily see a scenario where like Baltimore's up 10 late. And since he gets a backdoor, either touchdown or field goal, if you've noticed, some of these teams are kicking the field goal earlier and earlier when they're down multiple scores at the end of these games. Uh, I thought about it over, but my goodness, in a division game, 53 Thursday night. That's a lot of points to go it's, over, especially you know in, in the modern NFL, Jeff. So it'd be a lean towards the Bengals. It'll be a fun game to watch. I, I have not bet anything on it yet, though, Jeff. Uh, I like Joe Burrow over 273 passing yards in this game. Um, he has played well against the Ravens in his career. He averages nearly 285 yards passing. Them. I think a few years ago he had 400 yards in a game against them the year he had the comeback player of the year, right? That was like that, that, that stretch where he threw for 400 yards in, in multiple weeks in a row. And the Ravens' pass defense is not great. We know that. We've seen that this season. They allow a lot of pass yards. So I, I think you play that game this way because I think we, we both agree that Offense will move the ball here, and and in Will's Will's situation there, when the Bengals down ten late, I mean that's another seventy yards, right? That Joe Burrow has to go. Also, you could play Joe Burrow over one half touchdowns. It's a lot of juice, though. I don't know if I'd recommend that, but I could see him having three or four passing touchdowns. I don't think they're going to run the ball in to score in this game. They have to pass the football to to keep up with Baltimore. So I like Joe Burrow over that passing number. Yeah, speaking of Burrow, Will, you brought this up yes. earlier in the week, like. Burrow was a hundred to one to be named offensive player of the year. And, and I know a lot of people have the mentality of, well, the offensive player of the year is going to go to a running back or a wide receiver who, who's not MVP because people are going to vote a quarterback for MVP. And you're, you're probably not going to vote Burrow MVP, but a hundred to one with the numbers that he's putting up this year, say they maybe make, they make a comeback. They make the playoffs. Like, like why, sh why should we just automatically just give the award to, I don't know, Derrick Henry or, or Saquon Barkley is, is a running back. If indeed Burrow is putting up ridiculous numbers, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an insane number to have on this guy. Yeah. And I, I wrote a column which should be out later today, I think for, uh, for Fox sports. So, so look for that. I made a case for Burrow hundred to one offensive player of the year. I mean, he's thrown 20 touchdowns, four interceptions to put that in perspective. Lamar Jackson threw 24 touchdowns last year, the entire season, and one MVP. The year before, Mahomes threw 41. The year before that, I think it was uh, Rodgers who threw 37. So if Burrow throws 40-plus touchdowns, do some of these voters think, hey, I, I can't give him the MVP because they ain't win enough games, but as sort of a consolation prize, you got to give him something. Let's give him Offensive Player of the Year. 
I don't know. I mean, we, we heard Aaron Schatz, uh, who, who's one of the voters from uh, from FTN Fantasy yesterday, talk about, I don't think that way. I give it to the best non-quarterback, but I know there are some voters who view the quarterback, the second-best quarterback sometimes as, a, as an option for offensive player of the year. Offensive player of the year is one of those awards where it's sort of vague in the criteria. But look, at 100 to 1, it doesn't take that big of a bet to have some action and just, hey, if it, if it ever hits, you're, uh, you're looking at a pretty nice number there. John, do you know if you guys have any like liabilities on any guys in the, in, in the awards markets? <clears throat> I, I know I know all the Heisman liabilities off the top of my head, Bear, because the, the Heisman liabilities are every single guy who might win the Heisman. I think, <laughs> <laughs> for the, uh, I think uh, in the NFL MVP, I want to say it's Josh Allen. Okay is the guy that we're fading that, that actually has a chance to win. And he's pretty good. And he, he probably would get my vote right now, by the way, yep. if I had a, if I was agree. So, so inclined to have an MVP vote, I probably would go with Josh Allen. Well, we <clears throat> I just think he's been so super for the bills this season. And I know Mahomes has been great, but no. Kansas city has been winning a lot of those games, their defense as well. Yeah. And I, I'm I, I, like, I would vote for Allen right now too, if I had it, but it's like, you're, are you really going to give it to Lamar two years in a row? I, no. I, I Correct. I, 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 think, I think when you get to that level, voters start holding things like playoff wins against you. Even though it's yep. a regular season voting award and it absolutely should not matter what you do in the postseason, I think voters start holding that stuff. Like, oh, we're going to vote him for a third time with, with no Super Bowl appearances? Like, I think it's just not going to happen. Now, to be fair, I mean, Aaron Rodgers won MVP back-to-back years and didn't make a Super Bowl any of those years. I mean, it's happened before. Um, but I think when you have a season where, look, Josh Allen, I, I mentioned this the other day on, on something else that I was writing about. Like, if there was no Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen would be Patrick Mahomes. Like, right? Like, I think we all agree that yeah. he has the talent to be the best player in the National Football League. And if there's no Patrick Mahomes, he probably has a Super Bowl under his belt right now. And, and we look at him as the best player in the NFL. So he's sort of due for an MVP award. And it goes to often the team who wins the one seed. And Buffalo may or may not win the one seed. They play Kansas City next weekend. And if they beat Kansas City, they're they're on their way to potentially having the one seed. They have that tiebreaker with the Chiefs. So like that makes more sense to me. So does Jared Goff. We've talked about this for weeks now. You can't get that number now. It's not as good. But the Lions are going to be the one seed out West. Um, and so uh, I think that uh, that might be a, a play that's probably too late making now. But it, it feels like Goff or Allen are the two the, the two favorites. It feels like I think the Bills are going to get the 13 wins because they got the Colts, they got the Rams, they got two with the Patriots, they got one with the Jets, and I think they'll win at least one. They always lose a dumb game, though. Of, of Kansas City, San Francisco, <laughs> Detroit. I, 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 know, I, I know this is not the college pod, but being that John brought it up, I want to ask him, how— how long did you guys get on like Genty and Ward and Travis Hunter? Like, like what, what were the biggest bets that you, you took at, at the big numbers? Yeah. Uh, boy, you're you're really you guys are going through all the sore spots <laughs> on Thursday morning, aren't you? Guys? Um, Genty, I you know Genty didn't get as long as some of our guys wanted to make them longer early in the season. Mm-hmm. They wanted to put them up like. I forget exactly what they were talking about. A hundred some to one, 200 to one. This was after he was starting to put the touchdowns on the board. And I remember saying to the guys before I left that night, just be careful. Okay. Just don't do anything too crazy. I, I think most of the money we wrote on Gen was like 40 to one, but it, it adds up pretty quickly. Travis Hunter. We never really had high odds on him uh, or Cam Ward. We just took a lot of bets on both those guys. So it's the, the Heisman's tough, man. We we never do well in the Heisman. Yeah, maybe we've been losing on, this year. Maybe they'll. We've maybe been losing just... on the Heisman well since Lamar Jackson yep. won the Heisman. I mean, that's how long we've been losing on the Heisman. Uh, I, I don't know if we've ever done well enough. Maybe we should just not have a Heisman Trophy anymore. That's an idea. <laughs> I, 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 that's an idea. I, I let you off the hook in the Lamar Jackson year, by the way, because oh, I bet I, I bet oh. Louisville to to win the ACC. I bet Louisville to make the playoff, and I bet Louisville season win totals over. And the one thing that had to have happened, like in order for that to, to, to all those things to win, would be Lamar Jackson having a fantastic year. And the one thing yeah. I did not bet was Lamar, who I think was a hundred to one at your place uh, when I when I was out there making my bet. So uh, wasn't he, Bear? Am I? Am I dreaming this? Wasn't he not the starter at the start of the season? Though? They, he he had, he was not officially the starter. Okay, but but, but uh, okay. like like people people knew he was going to be, and that's obviously why uh, he, he was such a long price. But anyway, we'll, yeah, we didn't do well. On that. We'll we'll, 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 we'll move on to to less sore subjects. Um, 
Lions, Texans uh, this week, D- Detroit uh, three and a half. At some point, the uh, the Texans here are going to get Nico Collins back. And I, I guess the bigger question for the uh, for the Texans is like, what can they do to bolster an offensive line that was absolutely horrific uh, against the Jets last week? Stroud was terrible. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Jeff, you know, nothing. The trade deadline is past Jeff. Uh, they can do nothing. It's not even a talent issue. Well, it is at left guard. They have a huge one left guard. <clears throat> it's the scheme, man. The, the Shanahan scheme sometimes does not does not do well against Two pressures. weeks in a row, you're dumping on the Shanahan and scheme. We saw it again Thursday. They had no answers for anything the, the Jets were doing. And then they got physically beat at left guard. They switched the left guard around. Um, I tried to hop in front of the Lions train last weekend with the Packers. That didn't go very well for me. I feel like I'm not about to hop on the line, you know, the 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 train. I, I just, I, Texans getting three and a half at home sounds great, Will. But this Lions team is playing so well right now. I mean, yeah, they're back on the road. I mean, all the markers are there for this to be a close game. And, and maybe, te- but the Texans have not played Chris football for, for large portions of the season. And the Lions right now are just playing really, really well. So I would stay away, Will. I, 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 I'm not doing the Texans here. Uh, I like the Texans. I think I just can't get to three and a half. I mean, if you flip home field advantages, you're talking about the Lions laying seven to Houston. I just think you're so clearly paying a tax on for Det- for Detroit being such a covering machine, being so good against the spread, and not just this year, but under Campbell in general. So uh, I-, I think this is inflating. Now, Collins is huge. They need Collins, especially without <clears throat> digs. But you got Houston off a mini buy. You got a pretty good Houston defense. You got Stroud, who, you know, who's Good indoors. Uh, I, I think we see a close game. I'm sure John's going to tell us, as this is a standalone game, that a lot of the money line parlays are going to be leading into Detroit just winning the game. So, boy, for the for the sake of John and for the sake of just humanity, let's hope uh, they don't have to pay out some big parlays on that. Yeah. But uh, look, is Detroit just going to go like fifteen and two or sixteen and one? They're going to lose a game again at some point. I know they're a really good team and they might even be the best team, but uh, this feels like a trip up spot for them, John. Well, I appreciate that, Will. I, you know, I appreciate you thinking about me and, and the struggles that I have to deal with every week. It's really nice. To be. Look, I don't listen. I don't think Detroit minus seven at home against Houston is that crazy, though. You know, I think right now Detroit, if that was the line, Detroit is the best team in the NFL. We were talking about this in our in our war room on Sunday afternoon. We pretty much all agreed we would make Detroit favored against Kansas City mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl if that game was this week. I mean, I think right now. Detroit is the best team in the league. Houston's a little bit banged up, obviously, at receiver. I, I mean, I can't tell you guys we've seen some sharp money on the Texans at plus three and a half. And of course, the public is all over the lines. And, and, and the old me, the younger me, would like to bet, would probably bet Houston in this spot. But sometimes you got to just stay out of the way of a team like this, Bear. Yep. The Lions yep. team is just on fire right now. And I, I just have always felt like I've learned over the years that Sometimes you're better off just putting your money somewhere else. There's a lot of games to choose from this week. Do right. you really want to get in front of the Lions right now? I I don't want to personally. I think they're awesome. I don't either, and 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 that's kind of the biggest advantage that betters have over you and mm-hmm. Jay and Jeff and all the fine people at the Superbook is you have to put a number up on everything. Uh, we can pick and choose uh, what we want to bet. So that was actually going to be a question of mine, John. Is uh, did you have the the Lions power rated? Uh, the highest in in the NFL, and uh, Will, I think you and I were talking about this the other day too. Like, we were curious if the uh, the books would make Detroit uh, a small favorite over Kansas City, yep. knowing that same kind of thing as last year. You're going to get just everyone coming in at Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City as a dog potentially. But I, I do want to I want to say one thing about that though. I I've watched a lot of Kansas City games this season, and I think it's very obvious that they're holding some stuff back that they're keeping it a little bit vanilla, that they're going to, they're going to hold things back and, and have it ready for the postseason, Cause that organization does not care about regular season games anymore. Everything is focused on January and the Super Bowl, And I do believe Kansas city will be able to pull some tricks out of their bag, or whatever the expression is. <laughs> I was going to say, I was gonna say for sure. I was going to say really some, someone, someone to my left was nodding his head as, as, as uh, you were. Well, I don't, I don't in, know. Because the, well, no, 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 they get every call. It's because the refs are in their well, yeah. right Well, <laughs> well I was going to I, I say that I wow. think actually the Broncos this weekend are a good wager because I think Kansas City is in a, a bad spot. This Not a bad spot, but just to, to, to John's point about not caring about a game, I mean, this is a sandwich spot between the Monday football game, a super physical game in Tampa Bay, and going to Buffalo in two weeks. I'm not sure I believe in in look ahead spots in the NFL. 
Um, but the Chiefs know what they have to do, right? This winning by one point is all they need this weekend. Dever off a big embarrassing loss. I, I think this is a weekend to catch can the Kansas City snoozing. As far as with John's comment about like saving things, I'm not sure they're saving things as much as they're just experimenting with different ways to have offense. You know, uh, you know, it was a lot of Kelsey last week, which they had more Kelsey since since Rice got hurt. But again, like you're asking now, Travis Kelsey six days after getting 16 targets and 14 catches to kind of give you the same performance against a good Denver defense. I just don't see it. Um, you know, Hopkins has gotten more in the offense, but look, when Hollywood Brown comes back, which they expect him back at some time, hopefully playoffs. Pacheco, by the way, might be back at some point. If they have him and Kareem Hunt on the field at the same time, I mean, they have things they can do when guys come back healthy. So they are, I don't know if they're saving things, but there's definitely um, a different year. But Holmes is beat up. I, Will, I think this weekend, it's Denver plus is nine right now. I think it oh, is. It's actually gone. It looks like I was going to say it looks like hope at nine down to seven and a half. Yeah, like I, I still think Denver's the play here. I, I think this is a field goal game. Um, Chiefs may or may not win because to everyone's point, like they don't really they need to win, but they don't care about this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if you're betting the Chiefs this week, you're just throwing them in teasers. Find them with Philly. Find them with uh, the Chargers or something else because, like you said, the Chargers. I mean, the, the Chiefs just don't have an appetite for covering these big numbers. But that being said, it's Mahomes. He's at home. Uh, against uh, Denver's been a nice story and they've overachieved. They've been better than I thought. And a lot of people thought, but it's still a limited offense. I think with Nick. So I have a hard time seeing Denver actually win the game. So to me, I'll be, I'll be teasing the chiefs wheeling that and with, with, with a bunch of different legs. Another, another one of those legs in your money line parlays of the week there, John. Yeah. I can't wait for that one. I love, I love <laughs> it when we, uh, there's nothing better than sitting down in your office on a Sunday afternoon and rooting for the Chiefs to lose outright at Arrowhead <laughs> against a rookie quarterback. Uh, that would be awesome. Looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, well, well, like you guys are right. So this game has been bet down. I think Jeff said it. This game has been bet down from nine and a half to seven and a half. So we have seen some very respected accounts on Denver. I think that Kansas City is just on cruise control, preparing for the postseason, making sure they're as healthy as possible. Yep making sure they don't show too many of their looks. All they care about is just getting out of there with a win. But, uh, there's going to be so many money line parlays on the Chiefs. There always are. And that we'll be rooting for Denver to win the game somehow. I don't like our chances too much, to be honest with you guys. Let me ask you a question, John, because I've, I've been saying mm -hmm. uh, since last week, and I think I brought it up on the, on the pod here, like I was highlighting two weeks from now, uh, the Denver Broncos to make a, a yes to make the playoff bet. Uh, you, you look at where they are right now, uh, five and four, but they got the Chiefs, they got the Falcons the next two weeks. They're going to be five and six. And then you look at the schedule, Raiders, Browns, Colts, Chargers, Bengals, and the Chiefs in a game that's probably not going to mean anything to Kansas City. Like like yeah. how much are, 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 are you is that like baked into the price that you guys are going to post? Or uh, is that something that you guys think about when, when you're posting and updating yes, no playoff price? Is it, or is it just like solely the record compared to what other teams are in the AFC? No, you're, you're looking at, you're looking at the upcoming schedule. So when you talk about like, Oh, I'm going to bet this, but I'm going to wait until after this game and this game, it's already built in okay. price. I mean, it's like, it's like trying to time the stock, you know, good luck with that. That that's a, yeah. uh, it's not an easy thing to do. And if you think that the Broncos are a good bet to make the playoffs, you should just go ahead and pull the trigger because God forbid you wait for them to lose the next two games. I know they already lost the first one, but God forbid you wait for them to lose the next two games and they win one of them. And now your price is long mm -hmm. gone. So I, I do think in general, you shouldn't get too cute when you're trying to time the bet. If you like the bet, just go ahead and make it. Advice from John Murray at the Superbook. Thank you, John. Yes, uh, sir. Here, here we now we're gonna now we're gonna talk about a team I think that you're gonna be, feel very good about talking. The Washington Commanders made a big trade uh, for Marshawn Lattimore, uh, hosting in the Cinderella Steelers. Uh, Commanders minus three over Pittsburgh. This is kind of a uh, a Steelers spot, don't you think? Uh, Tomlin as a dog. Yes, no, maybe so, John. Very, I think it's a really interesting game, you guys. I mean, this game has bounced back and forth between two and a half and three. We're, this morning at the Superbook, we're at Washington minus three, even money. Pittsburgh's off a of bye week. Washington, just they continue to win every week. Um, it, it's it's as a, as a Redskins fan growing up, I think it's the strangest thing to see this organization, how quickly 
they could become uh, like a smart organ. Like all they needed to do was get rid of Snyder, yep. bring in a smart front office, and hire a competent coach, and now they're good. It paying it, paying attention, New York of, Jets? Paying attention? Yeah. <laughs> it took all of one season to accomplish these things. And my understanding, too, is they've got – I think they've got either the most or the second most cap space in the league next year. And, and they've got a whole host of draft picks. They, they made a trade this week. They got Marshawn Lattimore from the Saints. So Washington's playing really well right now, but I wouldn't want to bet against Mike Tomlin. Toss-up game here. The betting is very even on this game. A lot of money both ways. And like I said – the line's just moving back from two and a half to three. Set, sets up to be one of those games where we have a lot of money on it, but we don't have a big decision on it because both the teams are getting a lot of bets. Uh, I Look, I don't want to lay points against Tomlin off a bye against a rookie quarterback, so it would be Pittsburgh or nothing. I haven't bet it, but I'll just throw, it out, throw this out there to the panel. Uh, Pittsburgh is like plus 300 to miss the playoffs. I think we've all kind of penciled them in as a playoff team because of the hot start. Look at this schedule they have coming up. It was something we oh, talked yeah. about before the season. At the Commanders, they're a small dog. Against the Ravens, small dog. At the Browns on a Thursday night, not an easy game. At the Bengals, at the Eagles again, another game with the Browns. At the Ravens, the Chiefs, and Cincy again. That is an absolute gauntlet. Uh, are we sure? Are we absolutely sure? Like, if you think Washington's going to win this week, uh, man, plus 300 to miss the playoffs. I just think because that schedule might be worth a, a little dabble there, Bear. Now, it, it could be, and I actually bet. Uh, last night, I bet the Ravens to to win the division at like plus one ninety. I think it was uh, just kind of, just just kind of in that in that same same theory as well. Yeah. In knowing that the Steelers schedule, the the, only, the thing that I would worry about, Jeff, if you're betting the Steelers to miss the playoff, is the fact that they've already banked six wins, and you're looking at right now the sixth seed would be the Chargers who has five who have five, seven would be the the Broncos who have five. The Colts are four and five, but they're terrible. They're, they're done, yeah. You, you're say the Jets are three and six, but they're terrible. You're, three you're, and six with a bullet, though. Yeah, yeah. More, more, more on, more on well, that in the, uh, in, in the in the best bet segment later on. So you're really banking on the Bengals, I think, catching them. Yeah. To in well, they also have the tiebreaker against two of those teams you mentioned because they beat them already. Correct. So, but he, so here's my Steelers take for this game, and really to, to Will's point. So so far this season, they played. Kirk Cousins in his first game back off a of terrible injury. So they won that game. They played Bo Nix in his second game. Then they played Justin Herbert, who got who got beat up in that game. They lost to Joe Flacco, locked to da- locked to da- uh, locked uh, lost to Dak Prescott, and then played whatever corpse is playing quarterback for the Raiders. And then played Aaron Rodgers and Daniel Jones. I don't know. We have uh, Jaden Daniels, Lamar Jackson, uh, Jameis Winston, Joe Burrow twice. Uh, Hurts. Um, it, Pat Mahomes, like, like they're playing, um, and that's why my thing for this weekend is this is the best quarterback they played all season, like by oh, bar none. It's the best offense they played all season. And the thing about the Commanders guys is their defense is getting better each and every week, right? Yeah. Dan Quinn has done a good job. You add Lattimore now, like let's say Lattimore takes away Pickens from the Steelers' offense. What, what's the offense? What, what's it going to be in this game? So I, I know Tom and off a bike. All things Will said are absolutely true in this game. I think the matchup for Washington is a really good one. Is the total too high at 45? Washington's such an over team, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm just looking for a way to potentially make make a play here. I don't I don't, I don't know. Do, do we buy this Wilson resurgence? Like, what do we make of Wilson? That's that's oh, one well, so thing I was not expected. Uh, yeah, so here's no. here's my take on Wilson as of as of right now. He's only played two games, right? I believe it's two games. Um Right, it was Jet, Jets and Joe Giants are the two games I believe he played against. He played. Yeah. Um, they're doing sort of three things, right? They're running the football. With Najee Harris has played well lately. And then they're moving the pocket, right? They're doing play action pass and, and move the pocket, really sort of half field read. You're, you read one guy, you throw it here, you throw it there. And they're throwing go routes, which is what he's really good at. Those are three things. Now, as you get more film on him, teams try to start taking away some of those things, right? They'll bring pressure off the right side so he can't roll out on some of those boots. Like, they're going to find ways to sort of, okay, we're going to double pick-ins. Who's he throwing the ball deep to now? Now, of course, last game, I think it was Austin he hit for that long touchdown. Uh, the little slot fade was nice. Like, I, I think there's ways to slow them down if you start getting more film on this offense. I don't think it's going to be very diverse. They are what they are, and can you stop them is what the Steelers are going to tell everybody. Yeah, so this this very very interesting game, uh, like John said on on Sunday. 
Um, and we'll go a long way in d- dictating the uh, the Steelers' playoff hopes. I mean, maybe, Steelers win total, I think, is 10 and a half now. Maybe under 10 and a half might be a good way to, uh, to, to play their season win total mm-hmm. as well. So see what happens there. We're going to move on now to our uh, Super 6 game of the week. Super 6 sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, column coming up on FoxSports.com later in the week. And, of course, we we're going to ask uh, – well, the questions be, uh, well, what will the outcome of this game be? Uh, right now, the, the, uh, the Niners are a six-point favorite over the Bucks. It appears Christian McCaffrey uh, is at least practicing. Who knows if he's going to return this week or next week or any week in the future. But, but John, it feels like this is a pretty bad spot for, uh, for, Tam- for Tampa Bay here. You, you look at the Bucs uh, last week. You're on the field for... 40-something minutes, including an overtime, 83 plays of uh, the combo, a Kareem Hunt bruising on the line of scrimmage, chasing, running around, and dealing with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, six seems like a, a hefty number to uh, to lay, but the fact that you got the short week for the Bucks, the long week for the Niners, to, or the idle week in, in between there to get a little bit healthy, you, I, I would expect uh, probably a lot of people coming in on San Francisco this week, right? Yeah, they definitely have. Most of the money's on San Francisco. But what? Why didn't Tampa Bay go for two on Monday night, guys? Do you, I mean, what? Be, because what exactly? Do they think because was happen in be, because when you can, the options are w- potentially win the game right here with one play, or play another qu- play another quarter and give Patrick Mahomes another drive. Oh, yeah. Of course, you want to play Patrick Mahomes and and, play, and put the ball in his hands for a, to to win the game, right? The timeout well, was much worse, though. And you can't. I mean, uh, boy, go. Yeah, you got to go for two. You you boy. saved time for Mahomes. Like, what what are you doing? You're on the one yard line. There's 30 seconds left. You're not going to run out of time. You're just saving time for Mahomes. Oh, that was that was that was completely botched. <laughs> what did they think was going to happen with Patrick Mahomes in overtime? And you saw you I'm saw ba- you saw Baker as soon as the as soon as the coin flip was like, he knew he knew. Of course, I mean, there, no question about it. We'll need Tampa Bay. San Francisco is going to be a really public side. The kind of road favorites, Will, that have been coming through for the public for weeks. I mean, you mentioned it. Early in the season, these teams lost every game. And now they just seemingly can't lose. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be rooting for – we'll really need one of these teams to win outright. We're talking about the Buccaneers, the Broncos, the Cowboys. We'll, we'll need one of these teams to win, uh, to win on Sunday. Maybe the uh, Patriots – That'd be a good one. They look pretty good, so that shouldn't be much of a problem for us. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely need one of those teams to win on Sunday. I think I think the Niners are going to be a very heavy punt on Sunday. Was it last year or the year before where San Francisco was in a similar spot? They were scuffling, and they went to Jacksonville, and they absolutely boat raced them. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of this, where maybe they're getting a little bit healthy. They've had a bye to lick their wounds. Defense has actually played pretty well. Uh, Tampa's not going to beat you with their receivers. It's just a, it's a lot of Kate Ott and and, uh, and and not much else. So, boy, you figure these these uh, you know these home dogs are, are due to make a run here, and I'm afraid to lay points. But this is one where I'd actually probably lay the points if anything. We'll talk about this a little bit more in, in my fate of the week, but this is just a brutal spot for Tampa's defense. I mean, Barry mentioned 83 plays. Not only that, this was a physical game. The Chiefs ran the ball right down their throat the entire fourth quarter in overtime. The, the, the final three drives for the Chiefs where they got 100% of their yards and three touchdowns. And now you go and play, guess what? A team wants to run the football again on you six days later. It, it's, it's a really bad spot for Tampa Bay. Um, and look, their season sort of, there was this three game stretch. It was Falcons and it was Chiefs and Niners. This is sort of going to make or break their season. And now they're 0 2. Like, I just feel like it's a bad, it's just mentally, emotionally, physically uh, a bad spot for the Niners. So I would imagine off a of buy or feeling excited to get Christian McCaffrey back eventually. Like the news is good uh, with, with him returning at some point. And they won that big game against Dallas. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not doing the six. I'll have a, a fade later, but um, I think this is a, just a, a miserable spot for the Bucks to be in. Yeah, I'm looking at a Niners team total over here as well uh, as my my play in this game. Good time to uh, to buy on the Niners potentially to win the NFC or the Super Bowl. I mean, you, you're you're probably never going to get a better price than what they are. I think they're what eleven to one or twelve to one to win the Super Bowl, and uh, I think plus four fifty or so to win to win the NFC. Like. Any takers out there on Niners, NFC, or Super Bowl futures right now? Well, the, the that division is such a jumbled mess, Barry. I mean, I think all four teams are within half a game of one another. So I, I think it's hard to pull the trigger on a 49ers future right now. 
Yeah, I, I think it, you don't have to you don't have to lay that much on them to make the playoffs. I think it's only minus one fifty, minus one sixty. Do you play it that way, where hey, you make a bet on them to make the playoffs, and then they're not going to get the buy. You just play them round one money line, round two money. I, maybe that's a better way to go. I know that's people. You know, they just want to put the bet in and not worry about executing and rolling it over properly and things right. like that. But that's also a, a way to play it if you want to do I, that. I way. think I would I would prefer if you're just looking at that to win the division is supposed to make the playoffs because. Them being a wild card right now, where uh, you've got a whole, you've got a bunch of six win teams, the Vikings six and two, Eagles six and two, Green Packers Bay. six and three. Like yeah. the odds of them being a wild card, I think are probably slim because I mean I, I think you're still looking at a team nine and eight. If they get to ten, I guess they could potentially be uh, yeah. a wild card, but they might come up a little. Short. I'd rather just play them uh, to win the division and then maybe play the uh, the Jonathan Gannon uh, and uh, Coach of the Year at the number we were talking about uh, last week. Uh, as well, if the Cardinals happen to pull the upset and win that division, but I don't know. It, 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 we could be kind of sleeping, I think, a little bit on the Niners if indeed they are uh, getting healthy. Uh, the two teams that we we mentioned, both both of those teams a little while ago, uh, Eagles Cowboys. John said they're obviously rooting for uh, for Cooper Rush and all the Cowboys backups this week as a seven point uh, home dog against the Eagles. I'm sure the the key acquisition of uh, wide receiver Mingo will uh, <laughs> will give that Cowboys offense the, the the boost that they need to to pull the home upset over Philadelphia. John, how much did you move, move their futures when they traded for Mingo? Oh, big time, guys. I mean, da- if there's any team in the NFC right now that looks like a buyer at the deadline, it was the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I thought that made a lot of sense, especially now with the news that you know, Prescott, I guess, might be out for the season, they're saying. So I don't know. They're they're looking up at Philadelphia and Washington in this division. And this looks like a lost season for the Cowboys. I don't know why they'd be trading for a receiver. But Fourth round pick. The Eagles. Fourth round pick. It's insane. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. I mean, I'm trying to be nice, Bear. You uh, we got be. we got the Eagles minus seven, minus one sixteen right now. And and most of the tickets are on Philadelphia. It's just, like I said, just a lost season for the Cowboys. Crazy, because I don't really think the Eagles are that good. I don't so either. it's crazy to see them laying a touchdown in Dallas. Never would have thought I'd see that. But it makes sense when you look at all the injuries to the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to need the Cowboys, I think, pretty big. You know, I'm always, I know I say it every week, always look at a time slot. This will be the big afternoon game on Sunday, and everybody's going to be on the Eagles. How about a money line parlay of Ravens, Chiefs, Eagles? What what was it? Maybe we'll throw the Chargers in there too. Is that that's gonna be a popular one? Well, you'd one be the right? you'd be the only one, Will, if you did that. <laughs> I mean, there won't be just you'd be a man on an island with that one. I think that I think those teams and then I think Chicago is gonna get a lot of that too. I think yeah. Chicago at home against New England. Oof. I think the teams you hit on are going to be the most Oof. popular. But by the way, I would not advise that. I think, man, with all these favorites winning, and I know they say, hey, there's no correlation between last week and next week. It's This stuff tends to even out. With all these favorites winning outright, uh, I, I feel like at some point, you know what, you're probably a week too late with your uh, you know, your money line favorite parlays if you're going to go that way, which I, I don't really do to begin with. But if, you, if you've been doing well with that, maybe you just, you know what, you scale it back because the NFL has a way of, uh, you know, humbling you with, uh, with these trends. As far as Dallas, Philly, a lot of uncertainty is recording this Thursday morning because AJ Brown, Lamb, Parsons, all kind of up in the air. I think Parsons is going to play, but you know, it's just it's hard with those key players not knowing if they're going to play to, to really have an angle. If those guys are all out. Maybe you look at an under, especially if Parsons is back. But boy, it is hard to see Philly not winning this game. I'm sure Philly will be in teasers, and I'm a Philly Kansas City teaser. I you know I'm saying I'm worried about the favorites, but boy, I have a hard time seeing Dallas actually win this game with Cooper Rush. It's Thursday morning as we record this. Unfortunately, nice. running back props aren't up yet. Otherwise, I think my best bet this week will be Saquon Barkley over his rushing number. Dallas Cowboys allow 147 yards per game rushing. Uh, that's uh, that's 30, 30th in the NFL, just 10 yards by the, the Carolina Panthers. And what have the Eagles done lately? That's kind of restarted their offense. They run the football. And this is a run the football game. You're on the road. You're, you, the opponent can't. Uh, can't can't really stop the run. Interior defensive line for the Cowboys is bad. I'd play Saquon Barkley over his rushing number. Bijan last week, by the way, against Dallas was, I think, 73 and a half. I, I think I told you guys to wager that last week. He got way over that number. So I, I would look to back Saquon this game, maybe even back uh, any of the, the backup running backs. If this game gets out of hand, uh, Eagles could put a you know, backup in and end up uh, r- rushing for a lot of yards there. I just think this is a run-the-ball game for the Eagles. I mean, you, you saw uh, – you saw Garendo have a massive second half the last time the uh, 
the Niners played yep. against Dallas in that comeback win. Also, Mason was also a little beat up in that yeah, game, too. Which, exactly. Yeah, which is what so, I mean, they're having to Purdy. Purdy had a bunch of rushing yards as well. And obviously, I mean, we know Hurts is a uh, yeah. as well. So, yeah, I, I like your uh, I like your thought process there. Um, Bills at Colts, uh, the the Flacco should should be the guy crowd. I think they were a little bit silent with that performance, the statuesque performance in the pocket. Oh, on, you mean uh, he's not Sunday he's night. not good? <laughs> yeah, but Richardson isn't good either. <laughs> yeah, but Richardson at least allows you like the idea of like maybe he will be good one day, and we have a chance to to rebuild our franchise. No, he doesn't. Well, I agree with you, but at least you give a little bit of hope to your franchise. Don't give any hope. Flacco Flacco. has a strange career arc, doesn't he? He's really good. Then he's, you know, he's out of the league. Then he's bad. Then he's good. I, 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 it's very hard to make out, you know, what Flacco is. I know he's, I mean, the truth is somewhere in the middle where he's just kind of a mid tier, probably lower mid tier quarterback, but my goodness, he's just, he's kind of all over the map. Bills minus four. Uh, Feels like an over type of game. The Colts defense is, is awful. Uh, you you would you would I, w- I would expect the Bills offense to go crazy here and and, and again you, you'd worry at some point that the Bills defense is going to have a a bad game because they've been pretty good lately. This is a look ahead uh, spot though they're hosting. I know they got, they got that, that's why I'm saying I don't week. want I don't want to lay it because yeah. of that reason. But and I don't think I told you I don't believe in look ahead spots in the NFL. But this is one specific one where the Bills cannot beat Kansas City and they get them back in Kansas City. I mean back in Buffalo yep. next weekend. Everyone has this game circled on their calendar. If you're a Buffalo Bills fan, if you're a player, a general manager, um, the health of Amari Cooper. We don't know on Thursday if he's going to play this weekend. I'm not sure, John. I money on the Colts right now, but I think backing Buffalo this week is probably the wrong decision. You know, I might have made a few jokes on Sunday night about Flacco being in there instead of Richardson, guys. <laughs> I mean, what a you made what a joke? A switch. What a switch, you guys. That really worked out well for the Colts. I don't look, I don't know why they're playing Flacco. I, I mean I don't I think Flacco's like my age, isn't he? I I you know, I threw my back out getting out of bed this week. I mean, I don't know what Indianapolis is doing playing this guy. Uh, we're going to look, we're going to need the Colts big on Sunday. I can tell you guys, I think right now, Buffalo's our most lopsided ticket count of the week. We've got Buffalo minus four with a total of 48. It is a look ahead spot to the Kansas City game for sure. We'll need the Colts. I don't know how I feel about that. And I don't know what, I don't know, understand the point of playing Flacco. I mean, I know Richardson struggles, but they invested a lot of draft capital in that kid. He did, and and Flacco's an old man. It just doesn't. It, it I, even if, like what's the best case scenario? You play Flacco that what they they get the seven seed and they lose to Buffalo in the first round. I, I just don't. I, I, I don't get it. I, I, made I, I don't this, understand. I made this point a little bit, and uh, at times is like Chris Ballard, their general manager, gets a lot of praise in Indianapolis, and I always question like for. For, for, what? for what? Like what? Yeah. what? They, they, Andrew Luck retired like seven years ago now. <laughs> you know, like what are we doing at quarterback? You haven't found a quarterback in seven years. Which again, I mean, there were six years when he retired. Twenty eighteen was it? Was when he retired? Let, 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 listen, to, let, let, listen to Doc and Dan Dockage's show every now and then. You won't hear any Chris Ballard praise I just, there. I just don't really understand. Like what? What are we doing? You draft a quarterback with the fourth pick overall two years ago, and I get it. He might not be good. I I, I fully admit that. But he's still like 217 passes in his career. Or like, what? How would you even know if he's good or not if you don't play him? So, I don't know. They they seem to not really have a plan at quarterback because uh, Flacco's not their plan. Will he's not going to be the quarterback next season? Uh, I hope you're not disparaging the Matt Ryan Colts here. I hope that's not what's going on right now on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Did he, did he play for the Colts? When, when year was this? His final year in the NFL? Yeah, two years Two's ago. I remember that game. They blew the thirty-three nothing to the Vikings. I think it was twenty. Oh yes, I, I saw someone tweet that, that Tuesday night when the yes. uh, when the election results were coming in. So the picture of, yes. that, of, that, of that of that game. I had a, uh, I had a, look, I, it would be it'd be Colts or nothing for me. <laughs> Buffalo played a, a division rival division game against Miami last week. Look ahead to Kansas City. They, they, I mean, they're going to basically clinch the division by Thanksgiving. I don't know. I mean, same kind of thinking with Detroit. Are they just going to win every single game every week and cover every week? This feels like a game if you know, they were to lose or win by a field goal. So I, I think I'm going to bet Indy plus the four. Yeah, I, I, I may look it over. That, that That's a bad. I certainly would not be laying it uh, with, with Buffalo just because of the, the situation. Uh, the team that Buffalo beat last week, uh, the Dolphins, uh, Tua going on the road against the the Rams, who won a game that man, they, they, they an overtime game in Seattle. Oh, that 
It was just a disgusting game. And But there, there they are, the Rams winning games again in ugly fashion. You know, short home favorite against the Dolphins. I, I just, it's really, I mean, a home, it's a home game per se, but are the Dolphins fans really going to, the Dolphins have fans that are going to travel to L.A. to, no, I mean, no. It's a, I may, maybe actually for the first time in forever, the uh, the Rams will actually have a little bit of a, a home field advantage here. Um, looks like it's been bet down from three to one, John. So it looks like there is a little bit of a interest in betting the Dolphins here for some for some people. Well, first of all, I, I didn't think the Rams Seahawks game was an ugly game at all, Bear. You know, no. I had I had Rams in a contest in town. Oh. I thought that was an easy win. Yep. And Rams money was line was never that, in doubt. No. Yeah, very easy win. Rocking chair winner for us on last Sunday. Very sharp money on Miami. So this has been, I think, probably the most interesting bet game of the week. The public is all over the Rams. But some of the sharpest bettors we have are on Miami. That's why you've seen this number come down to right now the Rams are minus one. And Miami, look, they almost, they really gave Buffalo a good game last week. They blew the game the week before against Arizona. Probably should have won that game. So. Yep. They played a lot better with Tua back in the lineup. And we got some really sharp accounts on the Dolphins on Monday night. So more action on this game than I thought there would be. I'll say that. There's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of business on this Monday night game. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about who's gonna get that seventh spot for the AFC playoffs. Miami's better than a lot of these teams. It's just they dug themselves a hole with Tua being out, and then they gave away the Arizona game, then they lost a the coin flip game to Buffalo. But if you just started from scratch right now, if you started the season over, I mean they're they're playing better. They are better, you know, than, than a lot of these teams. That being said, I mean I boy, when the Rams have Stafford, the two receivers and Kyron Williams, they are really, really good on offense. I was on the wrong side of that one last week. Uh thank you very much. Seahawks three trips inside the red zone. <laughs> Not just zero points, three trips inside the red zone negative seven points because one of those interceptions went for a touchdown oh, get, uh, better luck next time i guess but I, I don't have much interest in this game yeah i'm, I'm, I'm looking at the the dolphin go ahead Jeff. what's the dolphin's motivation right now that that's what i was going to ask you like there's i was looking at their schedule because we were talking about right. how that seven seed in the afc could be a, it's tough yeah i mean they they got a they got a lot of poop town residents uh, coming up here on the schedule though raiders patriots jets yeah. twice Browns, you include your your Jets in Poop Town. Yeah, that's, that's not nice. That was not. That, nice. that was mean. We're gonna edit that part out once. We, no, yeah. no, no, you're you not. You want Jets fans to hear that? Trade trademark Scott yeah. Van Pelt. I gotta give give credit. Royal, credit Royal, to Royal Jets fan over here, Chris Felica. Yeah. yeah, they they they. they, they I, 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 I was the they, they 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 can't get there. They I, I I I was just trying to answer your question about motivation. Well, I was I'm just I never used I I, I didn't think you put the Jets in Poop Town. Just uh, that's They're just terrible. Terrible. It was hurtful. And they just won a game too, Bear. Oh, yeah, it was a terrific win. You don't sound like a Jets fan. I sound exactly like a Jets fan. <laughs> uh, I have nothing on this one. I would take Rams or or, or, or nothing. I just think Dolphins are sort of dead right now. Any other games out there, guys, that might be of interest to you? Thoughts, uh, thoughts on this week amongst the other games that we haven't mentioned yet? Yeah, Barry, I'll tell you, there's really sharp money on the Jets, your team. Oh, terrific. Uh, Jets. In Arizona this week, I bet the Jets every week. I actually won last week, which is nice. And I think I'll be on them again on Sunday. Looking forward to them. There, there's ever a team you want to put your money behind. It's those New York Jets. They never let you down. Correct. So I, I like. I'm looking at the Jets Sunday against the Cardinals. Is rock is rock is rock solid and consistent as you probably uh, could be at being all sports. Will anything before we go? No, I mean, look, we joke about the Jets and it's been disappointing. I was wrong about them. Like, we all thought they'd be good. You can, it's frustrating. The worst thing you can do is have hope. You can see the seeds of like, hey, you got Adams and Wilson. The defense maybe looks a little better with Red. Like, they, that's really not that bad of a team. They've just lost all these close games. Uh, they're not going to get to where, you know, we, we hoped they were going to get or thought they were going to get, but that's really not that bad of a team. We're really not that bad of a team either. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll be to go. But nobody's going to get traded past the deadline here and get put on waivers uh, as we move ahead to uh, to next week. John, well, appreciate you as always. Have a great week, guys. Tried to keep the the Liverpool talk to a, a to a minimum this Thank week you. for uh, but it's a very very exciting time on the uh, on the Mercy side. Munich saw a big Champions League football match this past week. Yeah. By the way, uh, Bayern Munich one nil over Benfica. Okay. A, a late, uh, I think it was, uh, I think uh, uh, Musiala scored late to to get 
uh, Bayern a win. Bad, badly, badly needed win in the Champions League. Oh, they, they had just gotten badly, blitz. Oh, badly. They, they, they had gotten blitzed oh, by wow. Barcelona in their, in their previous match. They got the three points against oh. uh, Benfica, which had they not would have been a, uh, a big problem. Talent on the pitch for that match. It would, it would have been horrific if they didn't win that game. Yes, it would have been. Yeah. Oh, believe me. It the would match. Have been. Sorry, yes. win the match. Yes. I watched Ted Lasso. The talent on the pitch for that match, a heck of a lot better than the talent you're going to see in Munich on Sunday when the Giants <laughs> take on the Panthers. In uh, this is another one of the uh, the Super Six games sponsored by DraftKings. What will the outcome of this game will be? Uh, New York uh, winning by six points or more, or Carolina winning. I will be watching none of this game. I will be rooting for Carolina uh, to win this game because I have a giant alt win total under five and a half. So yeah. the more games the Giants lose, the better. Uh, I need Bryce the, I Young. Need the, I, 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 Giants, I need the Bryce Giants Young win. pissed me off last week because he actually was okay. Yeah, and they knocked me out of Survivor with the Saints. So. Uh, no, norm, normal, normally, I would not be rooting for the Panthers to win, but now I need, I'm just looking out for my uh, my wallet and uh, hoping that the, the Giants are pinned with a loss. So uh, I, will be, I will be waking up, and I'll be looking at the final score, and hopefully Carolina will have won. I got nothing for you. I have, Gi- I have Giants under 6.5, and I also have Panthers' fewest wins in the NFL. So I, I can afford, oh, a Giants, what? afford a Giants win. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, a, and, I'm vice versa um, here. The Panthers— What a game. So I do some—every now and then I do some things with the Panthers, and— they were asking me like, "Do you do you um, do you drink beer?" And I was like, "No." They're like, <laughs> "Oh, well, we need someone to go over to, to Munich to Germany essentially during Oktoberfest and like hang out with NFL fans." And you show you you, you didn't they, lie. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I was eligible for that. I think they sent Ryan Khalil, which makes more sense considering he's a, yeah. a Panther legend. I'm just Jeff Schwartz. Um, no, but, no, don't sell yourself. I, I don't you're, think, not, you're not just Jeff Schwartz. But they they basically were like, we're looking for someone. I think we're going to send Ryan. I don't even know who ended up going. I think Jonathan Stewart ended up going, actually. And they're like, we're going to send someone over Oregon there. Oregon Duck legend, Jonathan yeah, Stewart. Yeah, Oregon Duck legend, Jonathan Stewart. So, yeah, that, that's what I have in this game. They're going to drink a lot of beer in Germany to have to watch the Panthers and, You'll need and to. Uh, Giants play. My also favorite thing about international games, Bear, is when they show the crowd – the random NFL jerseys that are in yes. the stands. <laughs> like, like you're going to see Commander's jersey, a Steelers There'll jersey. There'll be Tom Brady Jazz jersey, jersey still in no, there. It just makes no sense. Um, but what does make sense is my fate of the week, Bear. Here's what we're going to do. Niners minus three and a half for the first half at Tampa Bay. We mentioned this earlier, fading Tampa Bay. They played 83 snaps on defense. And not only 83 snaps, they're 83 physical snaps. Mm-hmm. If you watch any of that game, Everyone on defense, Kansas City, which makes no sense why the Bucs didn't go for it, and the Bucs defense were exhausted. They were so tired. Now it's a short week, and you're playing a Niners team off a of bye who wants to do the same thing to you, run the football. I think it's just a bad spot for Tampa Bay. Um, you sort of gave it all you had on Monday night and still lost, and part of that is your coach's decision to not go for two. I wonder about the morale, losing two straight games, sort of in this tough stretch, Falcons, mm-hmm. Chiefs, uh, 49ers. I think it's a really bad spot. So not the best number you could have gotten. It's Thursday. We have to record when we record. Um, but uh, Niners are minus three and a half here for the first half. Right. It, 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 it is what it is, unfortunately. Yes. We can't, we can't create numbers <laughs> uh, out of the blue that, that don't exist. And we won't. Uh, my best bet presented by Drift. Well, Sports. to be fair, some people do create wins and losses. And, this is and true. And other odds. Um, this is true. That don't actually it, exist. We, we don't it, do that here. It's it's very difficult to interpret a two point conversion and a touchdown. It is, yeah. yeah. It, it can be very it can be very very confusing. It's it's easy to do that when you don't actually wager on the games. We wager on the games. We know whether or not you we actually do. you actually win or lose. We do. Uh, sorry, go I, ahead. I didn't I didn't bet a ton in the NFL last week. Actually, he didn't have really anything. Did some. It was at my nephew's birthday party, so I was glad I, I really didn't have anything. I had a lot on Seattle. I was very upset at Geno Smith. That was a that was. A, Bad yeah. job. Yeah, it wasn't great. Bad job. But you're going to do a good job for your best bet, though. I am. Our uh, best bet is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. With all due respect, John Murray, <laughs> what you were talking about in the gambling group chat, are people really doing this with the Jets again? Yes. Uh, this team has already lost to the Patriots. They've already lost to the Broncos. They should have lost to the god-awful Titans. The first half last Thursday night was an absolutely horrific display of football. Only the fact that the Texans' offensive line w- resembled like a Division II college football team <laughs> and uh, an all-world performance by Garrett Wilson mm. like bailed the Jets out. This is still a poorly coached, mediocre football team that now is going to have to deal with a mobile quarterback 
and Kyler Murray, a great receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. And now the line has moved my way. Well, I, when I was looking at this last night, the Cardinals from Jets were a pick them. Now the Jets are favored minus one. My best bet, Cardinals getting a point at home. I've also played some Cardinals, as we talked about in the gambling group chat, to play some Jonathan Gannon, uh, coach of the year, maybe the Cardinals to win the division as well. Because if you look, Arizona's got two games left with Seattle, who's totally in the tank after what happened last week. They got the Jets, Patriots, Panthers left in the schedule. And then the final game of the year is with the uh, with the Niners and Glendale, and maybe we'll see what that game means and what that game doesn't mean. But, yeah, love the Cardinals this week at the point. This is sort of an anti-Jets wager, obviously. I, I, they're one of those teams, the Browns are sort of this way, too, where, like, the roster is good, but the results aren't there. Yep. But because of the things they sort of can do well, sharps love them. That makes like they just yes. sort of are always on them. Yep. Um, you know, John mentioned you know going for the Jets for the eleventh straight week in a row. Like in theory, on paper, they can win every game, but they don't. Right. And the funny thing is, Arizona. What do they do good? I don't. I don't know what they do good. Like they're just they just sort of are there in every game. I mean, Colin Murray's really yeah, good. They, 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 I, I, think, I think they are extremely well coached, and their players that they have. They have a fun run game, too. Buy, yeah. buy, buy into they have. the scheme. Yeah. Um, all right. My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, I'm kind of going against a couple trends here, Bear, but I'm taking the Commanders minus three against the Steelers in this spot. Hmm. Um, the Steelers, as I mentioned earlier, have not played an offense like this, not played a quarterback like this. And the more film you get on Russell Wilson, I think the better you're going to play defensively against this team. They do a couple things really well, but if you take those away, and I think Marshawn Lattimore being added to this defense will change what the commander's defense can be. I know Tomlin's off a bye. You're getting points on the road, like all these things. I was looking at the bet slips, which is or the bet totals, which is really not a way to wager all games bear. No. But a lot of people in Pittsburgh, like the public's on Pittsburgh it, this weekend. The Steelers as well. and Tomlin's yeah, so, dog is going to yeah, be the so, we're talking about John. I'll take Washington minus three here. Give me Jane Daz. I don't think I've wagered one time in Washington this season. I'm, I can't, I'm going to miss the boat on it, but uh, we're doing it this week. Hopefully, uh, yeah. It's one of those teams. Like, if, if you're not there for the baptism, you don't want to be there for the for, for the for the funeral. Is what yeah. the rule. But we'll see. See what happens. You could be, we could be right with the Steelers. One other thing that I did potentially look at for a uh, for a best bet in a game that we didn't talk about. Shockingly, we did not talk about Titans Chargers uh, during the gambling group chat. What, what teams are those? Um, team from Tennessee and the team that used to be in San Diego that's now in LA. I think they were in LA. And it, oh, yeah, so that mm. uh, I'll be looking. Why should the team in LA be favored by seven and a half over anybody? Yeah, but that's not what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at a team total under for the tight for the Titans. Under you look at the three games that the Chargers have played so far this year, they've allowed 10, 17, and eight, haven't allowed more than 20. Defense is good. And this your defense plays well. And they just play that running game, drain clock. Oh, yeah. Kind, kind of bully ball in the Titans quarterback situation is one of many, many, many awful quarterback <laughs> situations in the league. How, how are they scoring points? I don't know why we wager on stuff. I had J.K. Dobbins last week under Bear, and he had like 30 yards through the first 55 minutes of the game and then ended up with like 60 yards on the final mm-hmm. drive of the game. Pound, just, pound, pound, just, run, run, uh, run. so frustrating. Oh. It is, yeah. Yeah, this is... This is by far the the worst possible investment you could make with your money is the NFL is one. That's why I thought I mean, looking at some of like the the derivative stuff is probably the uh, the way to go as opposed to straight games. But we'll see. Got a, got a couple of things potentially we uh, we like this week, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll catch some tickets for you, uh, John and Will. Appreciate them as always. Appreciate you for. Rating, reviewing, subscribing, and consuming our podcast wherever you get Big your numbers. podcast. Numbers going up. They Basically, said. I was going to say we, we are. We, we, we told a record-breaking month, so uh, that's good. I think I was going to say either. It, it, well, it's good because either a people are listening because we're doing well, or, or, or b we're just entertaining and we're losing and people are fading us. So, uh, well, one way or another, it's They're good. Listening though, they are listening, and that's all that yes. matters. We appreciate you listening and check us out on that Bear Bets YouTube channel as well. For John and Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. And remember, bless you bet. The more you lose when you wait.